on and talk about a really important topic, which is what I call the excuse trifecta. And what it is, is this season we're coming into, which is already starting now because you can already see the Halloween candy coming out. Look like I have a scarf on, doesn't it? <laughs> the Halloween candy's coming out. And then it's the feasting festivities of Thanksgiving, which is the big start of all of the holiday food fest activities and tons and tons and tons of sweets and treats throughout the whole holiday season. And you know, this lasts for months. And it is the perfect opportunity for our, let's see if we're gonna catch a sunset here, for our addictive, let's see if I can get it in there. I don't know our addictions to rear their ugly heads and make an excuse that it's okay to fall back into the ditch. And it's the perfect time for all of the family, friends, co-workers to start sabotaging your efforts. No, we might get a pretty cool sky tonight. I'm heading down for a long walk, but I'm going to try to make it back before it's pitch black. Um, so, what I was going to bring up is the fact that make a plan and be aware of it. Be aware that that little nagging part in your brain that so badly wants to go back to the, tr the garbage food, the sugars, the sweets, your favorite desserts, favorite things moms, aunts make during this holiday season. Uh, you have to make the decision and remember, recall all your past decisions regarding this leads you back in the ditch, leads you to continue until it is again, hmm, what? Time for New Year's resolutions. <laughs> and there we are, back again. Back in the same old thing. Joining the gym, getting back to the gym, starting your walks. And point being, if way back right now, mid-September, is when I like to bring this all up, when all of the treats start coming into the stores. All of the uh, candy is around. And just think to yourselves, am I going back there again? <laughs> Sometimes you start in and it's just a big slippery slope right down into through the end of the holidays with cookie swaps and ongoing garbage, junk, sugar, treats that are all around us. And I just say always just see if I can get the sunset going down uh, and have a plan and just say, you know what? Damn it, I'm not going to do it this year because it's a perpetual cycle. And sometimes it's hard to get back out of the ditch. So I'm going to try really hard to pay attention to seeing if I can answer all the questions that come up. Okay, Mary says, chocolate is my addiction. I cannot eat even one M&M without falling into the trap. Yeah, I mean, there's no such thing as one M&M. Come on. You got to get the orange one, the dark brown one, the light brown one, the green ones, of course. I think there's blue ones too. Think of all those chemical dyes and think of how much profit, how much money these, company, these companies make off of us being addicted to sugar. Uh, man, you know, it's, uh, it's a multi, multi, it's a 
trillion dollar industry, I'm sure. Uh, okay, let's see. Cool Cat says, I really appreciate your live on the beach videos. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and experience with successfully living the carnivore lifestyle. Yeah, I, I try to, you know what, because I think part of the issue is people can't comprehend the word never or the phrase never again. And, you know, it's not that I can't ever for the rest of my life have chocolate. Uh, right now, for right now, I'm choosing not to have chocolate. I feel so good not going back into that dark hole again. I know, I know where that leads me. And when you can think that out ahead of time, right now, mid-September, before the real uh, triggers are even more in your face. I mean, I'm gonna say two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago when I was in the store? Yeah, I think I was up at my parents and there's always, always a trip into Walmart That's uh, during that couple days that I'm there. And I think it, yeah, it was Labor Day weekend. Yeah, that's exactly when it was. Uh, man, there was aisles of the Halloween candies. And then there's some costumes and then there's some decorations, but man, up front and center, the orange and black sprinkles, the jack-o'-lantern shaped orange icing cookies, and you know, you get it, but it's in our face. So this is what I'm gonna, that sunset, it's gonna going down fast. It's in our face constantly, everywhere you go. And it's already now, it's basically, it's actually, I think I, yeah, I do remember, I was in a store and it was, um, it was the third week of August and I saw the, uh, the Halloween candy out already. And I, I thought, oh boy, time to go on, time to do a live, time to make a video. So here I am making a video about what I call the excuse trifecta. It's always about being able to justify and make an excuse for uh, what you most want back in your life. And it's your addiction talking. So it's getting a little chilly out here. Nighttime now. I'm going to have to put a sweatshirt on. So the trifecta being Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then of course the holidays right after is the big final push to get you wrapped back in before the big old New Year's resolution comes back into play. So I would say make a plan, have a plan, make a decision right now, but you're not going to do it. If you're going to do it, you're going to remember it's back and forth in and out of the ditch. So uh, let's see. I think I've got carnivore down pat, but the one thing I can't seem to eliminate is heavy whipping cream with coffee. I know it's sabotaging my weight loss, but dang it, I've already given up everything else. Yeah, worth every mile. I know exactly what you're talking about. I had that same feeling about uh, cheese. And I was like, wow, you kidding me? Birdie like scraped my whole entire dietary intake down to this animal products and now I got to take out one of my favorite animal products crazy I don't want to you go down kicking and screaming but ultimately what you have to think about is yeah you know what sometimes you gotta just say suck it up buttercup and do it learn something from it do it for 90 days and then just know you know what I learned something very valuable by doing that for 90 days and then I can make the decision I'll make an informed decision 
lot of birds. <laughs> there we go. Um, about what the benefits were and how you feel about it and what you want to do going forward with it. So, uh, hang on a sec. Hang on, here, whoops. Let me turn this so you guys can look at the ocean instead of looking at me and attempt to button. Uh, so, yeah, it's not forever. You don't, have, don't say, you have to, don't think about it that it's forever. You can say, you know what, it's just, it's just for now. Just to figure this out, just to learn something. So, yeah, I know, I get it though, but if you're looking to make a change, you have to make a change. That's the key thought. And it's not a popular, <laughs> It's not a popular thought because, you know, the other one of giving up the artificial sweeteners is huge for most people. Giving up the heavy whipping cream. So, some people what they do is they uh, they froth with a little frother. Uh, I have one I love. It's rechargeable. Has three speeds, which is key because if yours just has an on and off. I know from experience that sometimes the on is not so, so I like mine's got low, medium, and high, but I'll put a link to the frother that I love that I'm using, but getting back to what I was saying, you can froth an egg yolk uh, in your coffee and instead of the heavy whipping cream, and many really enjoy that, just a raw egg yolk. Uh, you can do raw egg yolk and a little bit of melted butter. Froth it up and add the coffee. It does not cook the egg. And froth it a little more and you'll get a nice creamy frothy. And just a tip in case you want to really make the effort, suck it up and get rid of the heavy whipping cream and see what happens. 90 days, it's only a little blip on the radar in the timeline of your life, but what you can learn from it is going to be extremely valuable one way or the other for you. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna keep going. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna try really hard to concentrate and stay right on your questions. Uh, so yeah, must have give that up too, it's so unfair. It is unfair, but you know what's not unfair is Think about it. Think about it if it gets you to that next level up. And you, either whatever, it might be an ache, a pain, it might be further weight drop, it might be better mental clarity, it might be totally getting rid of post-nasal drip, it might be totally getting rid of any uh, reflux, gastric, uh, the GERD kind of things. It could be so awesome that you might look back at it and say, ugh. Can you imagine I was fighting tooth and nail to not give it up had I only realized sooner how much better. So that's the kind of thing that I'm just getting at where I know it's so easy to just sink into wallow of woe is me, why do I have to give up even further? But yeah, it's about changing your relationship with food and the connection to it and the habit of it and you guys get it you know what I'm saying and it's not easy and you know one thing I always remember and I'm sure it wasn't my dad's original saying but I always remember him saying to me nothing truly worthwhile in life comes easy so put in the effort put in the work I know you could say well I'm already dang putting in the effort of uh, this whole thing and I'm down scraping so low on the barrel here of what I'm allowing to pass through my lips and wow I gotta go further down dig deep guys dig deep okay um, it's my only treat I know and you know then you know we could get in the conversation of coffee 
And I know some people give it up and then they bring it back in. I go, oh, you're back on the bean, right? Yeah, I'm back on the bean, damn it. It just goes to show you how addictive this stuff is and how strong of a drug this stuff really is. And give it up for 90 days, learn something. Don't think of it as forever. I think that's the important thing. Don't think of it as forever. Think of it as a 90 day learning experience. And then go forward from there. You might say, you know what? The benefit I got out of it wasn't worth the intensity of how much of a treat it is and how much I enjoy it. And, and make that decision for yourself, but do it, um, do it after you give it a realistic uh, shot at giving it up. Uh, avoid the cycle by making a plan. That's right, D. You know, if you, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And if you really want to get onto the other side, you got to stop doing this in and out, in and out of the addiction. Uh, simple Chatelaine says, I changed to 80-20 carnivore and I'm losing weight and not thinking about food. Oh, yeah, it's not food. The junk is not food. So, uh, <laughs> hi, Rainy Cascadia. So, simple Chatelaine, I love what you just said about how this 80-20 is allowing you to drop weight and stop obsessing about food. I found very similar feeling with having a, a, a level up of calmness around thoughts of food and fighting off food. When you have a high enough fat and an adequate amount of protein, remember this is not low protein, it is lower than what I was used to and what most people are used to when you first come into this carnivore kind of community and it's like all right damn it I'm eliminating everything else the carbs the grains the crackers the rice the pasta the sweets the treats I'm eliminating that all damn it I'm gonna eat my slab of ribs I'm gonna have a ribeye or two I'm gonna order three burgers and damn it I'm gonna eat so I, be, I really believe now after doing this that it is so much more satiating, so much more nourishing, and I really feel so much more of a benefit, especially for people who suffer from any amount of anxiety, depression, mental fog, family history of dementia, Alzheimer's. This is really important stuff, and I'm out here talking about this because I really want to make sure that anybody who is on a path of this and really truly wants to keep seeking information about what's the best way to go about this, I'm just saying that after 13 years of doing this, I did do higher fat at the beginning. I remember Charles Washington and that whole group talking about don't fear the fat and eat the fat and but it wasn't to the point of measuring macros. We didn't do any of that. It wasn't to the point of pounding lots of extra butter on purpose to make sure we had a certain it wasn't about that. It was eating fatty meat, eating fat trimmings even actually frying up maybe some extra fat trimmings that maybe somebody else at the dinner table was cutting off to not eat, fried up in the pan the next day with some eggs. That was the thought process. And somehow that kind of got lost along the way. Uh, and, and part of it was, damn, it's just so enjoyable to be able to think I can eat as much as I want. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just here to say, at this part in my journey, it's really important, I believe, for optimal health to make sure, and I'm not saying it has to be 80-20, might be 60-40 for somebody and 70-30. Uh, maybe somebody who has 
more inflammation, more health issues, it might be uh, more beneficial to go a little bit higher. And uh, that's just something that over time you can kind of figure out as you experience how you feel with certain levels of fat. But it does involve tracking for a little bit of time. It's no big deal. The apps are free. It's so ridiculously easy. It's not time consuming and well, well worth the time and effort that's involved. All right, I'm gonna go, keep going in here. Uh, Dee said she bought goat butter today and it's delicious, not sure. It's worth the extra cost, but glad I tried it. Yeah, Dee, you know what? I will make comment about that briefly. I bought a container of goat butter purely out of really curiosity of, because I'm not a big goat cheese fan, I gotta admit. I am such a cheese fiend, a cheese addict, a cheeseaholic. There are really not many a cheese I've met that I didn't like, but pretty low on the list. If I had to go from top to bottom on cheeses, goat falls down in the bottom one third. It's not that I wouldn't eat it if it was there. And, uh, <laughs> but so that being said, uh, I have bought some recently that I'm going to try again because I haven't really had it in a while. And actually I found a goat cheese that kind of had an orangish color and I forget, I think it had a seasoning of chili, maybe like a chili powder in there, like a chili seasoning. And I can't remember now, something else. And I don't know, I'm gonna try it. It has a nice uh, fat profile that can be ben beneficial. C8 uh, MCT medium chain uh, fat that can be pretty beneficial for ketosis. So what the heck? Always up for adventure. So I'm off on a tangent now, but getting back to the goat butter, I was very curious just to see what that would taste like. To me, as a goat cheese uh, low fan. I actually like the goat butter. It does not have a strong goat cheese tang to it. Um, so I liked it. Uh, and I got it because I'm interested in that profile. I'm going turn around because it's going to get dark really fast. Um, here, we're going to go with the backward wind on the hair. It's going to be wild, guys. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, just, just know, and, and I think it's actually good to vary what we're eating. Have some Wagyu beef tallow. There's a great one. Um, I'll put the link to that in this too, that I love the fact that at room temperature, it's not a hard solid. So I use it to moisturize. It's like the consistency of mayonnaise at room temperature and it goes on so smoothly. I actually did a YouTube video that includes that in it and I talk about skincare and I'm very close to getting that finished uh, editing so that will be up soon but yeah I really like that and I just think it's good to vary the fats when we're trying if you're trying this higher fat to not do solidly all butter and to mix up the types of fat, beef fat, pork fat, pork belly fat, uh, goat butter, and uh, the, the Wagyu tallow. Ah, uh, Leslie, you bought the Suck It Up Buttercup shirt. I love that. You know what? I, got, I think I have to design my own and, uh, and make it in a shirt and maybe have like Carnivore Doctor says suck it up buttercup and I'll put it up on the website for fun because uh, yeah I just I just like I love that okay uh, let me go look and make sure I'm gonna try to like I said try really hard to get to all your questions I know it's annoying watching you try to find it uh, yeah the sky's pretty now it's now I'm losing the Sun 
Uh, Karen Curtis says, yes, the egg and butter are delicious. Yeah, so, ah. Rainy says, day four, no coffee or heavy whipping cream. You go, girl. And there's all these little countdown things. There's a, there's a countdown app called I Am Sober. And I do believe one of the choices, you have a choice of what you are counting down. And I believe caffeine is one of them. Go in and check it out. It throws up a real nice uh, little daily reminder if you've re reached your double digit milestone when you hit 10, you hit your two week, your one month. It's kind of fun, it's motivating. Uh, David Brooks says, the PhD for me is mostly meat with cheese and avocado. You're right, the junk food and candy is everywhere and cheap. Yeah, and it's it's calling your name. We all know we had our favorite, whether it was a Kit Kat or an Almond Joy or a Mounds or Reese's, you name it. We all have a whole list of our favorites and they're in our face and you just have to keep remembering. Just say, trigger, trigger, not food. And, uh, just look at it as a pile of poison. Uh, Monday, Shelly says, Monday's my one year mark being carnivore. Your carnivorsary. Started this to heal my skin. Some seem to get healing so quick while others take a while. Patience, patience, patience. Yeah. Uh, that is a frustrating thing when you see some that are touting such great success so quickly. And it really, our bodies take time to heal. So, uh, Hello, Marie. Kathy says, I love your live chats on the beach, sharing so much info about carnivore way of eating. Yeah, I love, I love doing these. I love, uh, I love to just keep trying to get the word out that this is a sustainable way of living. And in my experience, healthy, I know there's no definitive studies. I actually had somebody email me directly asking me, about uh, a number of different things. There was a few questions in there that I got to for them. Uh, they've been told they have to drink a certain amount of water every single day and asked if I do that. And I, I definitely do not do that. I, I feel like the appropriate thing to do is drink when I'm thirsty. I do try, I do try to have water out because I know there's times where maybe it'd be like ah, could go for a nice swig but it's not nearby it's not handy and I'm busy so I do try to keep it out that's the one thing I'm gonna say I, I do but I do not have a measured amount and say oh I have to drink a gallon or I have to drink 60 ounces I just I just don't I never did I don't understand because this person was saying they're so uncomfortable drinking that amount of water and they're peeing all the time and uh, I I just um, to keep it simple our bodies are so finely tuned to trigger a thirst when it's time to get more water so uh, let's just think about that um, let me go in here again can you elaborate on the 80-20? I'm new to macros and I'm confused. My daily fat gram macro is 119 grams, according to the app. Protein is at 80. So Terry, um, yeah, so there's so many variables about where to, what's your, what the starting point is to attempt this. You could do, the one thing that I don't recommend as a starting point is just continuing your typical uh, meat meals and adding a certain amount of fat and butter to reach an 80% by calories fat to 20% by calorie protein because that would not be good for uh, trying to keep the weight going down or staying at where you're at if you're already at your goal weight. But just adding fat's not the answer. And it's the key is figuring out what is the appropriate amount of protein for you 
and then deciding, you know, I, I try to not call this 80-20 because for some people, 75-25 is perfect. They feel good, it works fine, they have no uh, bowel movement issues, and so I try to not make it so that people think it's 80-20 or out <laughs> or you're a failure or, you know, if you're right now, you have to start tracking exactly what you're doing now and see, are you at 50-50? Are you at 60-40? Where are you at? And then from there, uh, do a couple different calculators to figure out for your height and your weight and your current weight and your goal weight, where should you start at with the amount of protein? And remember, this is not low protein, high fat. Not, not, not. It is plenty of protein, high fat. So I just want everybody to understand that, switch arms, that you have to remember we're not depriving ourselves of protein. We're not going to the point where we are using muscle or losing hair or messing up our hormones. There's nothing like that at all going on. You have to remember that going from, for me, eating a pound of ground beef or whatever it is, ground veal, even grounds of doing lower fat, experimenting for a while, but whatever it is, a pound then and then a pound ribeye for dinner was way too much protein for me. Way too much. That was an overabundance. And if you are over on Instagram, I've been posting a bit over there about this. And the other day I posted about how there are studies that I really delved into to try to understand exactly how much protein at one meal our bodies are really intended to synthesize into all of the amino acids and things we need for hair, skin, nails, muscle, organs, heart, our heart is the muscle. Uh, and it was anywhere from about, uh, let's say, let's say a typical, these studies were showing 20 to 35. Now, my question is, can't be the same for a five foot two woman versus a six foot two guy. It's gotta be that a guy has gotta have a better um, or a larger synthesis going on for that size body. So that's why I'm like, and I don't know whether that just means from 20 to 35, the 20 is for the five foot two woman and the 35 is for the, the tall guy. But in any case, eating more than that, your body has to figure out what to do with the excess. And uh, protein is the only nutrient out of protein, carbs, and fat. Protein is the only one that has nitrogen in it. And if anybody who's done carnivore for a while uh, and had blood work done, sometimes the BUN is, uh, it's a blood marker, can be just a touch over the high end on the uh, blood work results. And yeah, our body has to break down the excess protein and do something with it. So, and then there's gluconeogenesis and the potential that it is then causing insulin response and a gradual increase in one's A1C. So I think it's really important to understand what's going on and why adequate protein might potentially be 30 grams per meal. You have three meals, you're at 90 grams. That's, you know, maybe for a taller female. 5'8", 5 5'10", 5 uh, could, you know, handle 90 grams of protein. And then 
if you're looking to get or attempt or try or see how 80-20 does, you double that amount of fat. So if you're doing 90 grams of protein, you'd be at about 180 to 200 grams of fat for that person. Now, that's way high for me because I'm only 5'3", so I'm down more at doing 60 grams a day, somewhere in that vicinity. And you could say anywhere from 50 to 70. I always like to just say there's a range and we play around with it and every day isn't perfect and it just might vary with what we have, that what we got at the store and how much we measured out and how we feel. But let's just say, let's just say for argument's sake, I'm aiming for about 60. I will decide how my day is going. Do I want to do two meals and I'll have 30 grams of protein at both of those meals? Or am I going to do three meals and do 20 at each meal? 20 is still plenty for somebody my size. Uh, 20 is like two eggs and some ground beef and some butter. It's plenty of food. Uh, so I just think that uh, you have to you have to jump in. If it's something that you want to try, jump in. And uh, I have groups to talk about this. You can ask questions at every meeting, pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. You can uh, discuss during the meeting. Uh, specifics. Uh, we talk about different meal ideas. We talk about different ways to add fat in. Uh, and it's just great to have a community of people that are all doing this, all expressing. I've had people in my groups this morning who was so awesome who were talking about how excited they were that they are sleeping so much better, better than they ever have. And that alone is like really a game changer. It, we don't realize how important sleep really, really is. Oh, the sky is kind of pretty, right? We're losing the losing daylight fast. Got to walk faster. Uh, so yeah, I think that um, you, uh, let me, I'm going to get back to the original question here where I went off way on this 80-20 tangent. But yeah, if, uh, you know, I, I will definitely help anybody in these groups specifically get you exactly where to start, both fat and protein. Depends where you're coming from as far as your prior history of carnivore. I usually tell people if you're brand new to this and you're just kicking around the idea of uh, getting rid of all the crap in your your diet don't don't jump into this whole you know thought about having to do it this way and having to eat butter and fat and it just it gets overwhelming so please please if some of you out there are literally just coming onto my channel and wanting just some motivation and inspiration about this whole fly your freak flag carnivore thing and not eating vegetables and fruit and wrapping your brain around giving up sweeteners and diet coke and chewing gum and if you're at that stage i really discourage you from feeling like you've got to jump into this uh this high fat thing i would just encourage you to think about as you're venturing into this carnivore think about leaning toward fattier cuts like ribeye and um, not trimming off the fat um, maybe cooking your eggs in a little bit of extra butter and pouring that butter right onto the plate or in the bowl with the eggs and enjoying it uh, bacon's actually not fatty enough for this protocol you actually have to smear a little uh, cream cheese on that bacon or dip it in some whipped brown butter which is so delicious and 
pretty darn awesome to dip bites of. If you have filet mignon, then uh, yeah, use use it uh, to enhance the proper ratio. And just think about it. But in the beginning, you really have to just. Gosh, it's so hard. I know. I I barely remember 13 and a half years ago, but I kind of do remember. It was hard enough for me to wrap my brain around not eating a toasted bagel again or being at a diner having breakfast and not getting my toasted rye bread or yeah it's so hard at the beginning to even contemplate doing this so forget about this other this is like carnivore 201 that I'm talking about and that's why I encourage people if you want to come into a group I find that is one of the very best things you can do because when you're heading into this, you're going to be surrounded by naysayers, co-workers, family, friends, people who will attempt to sabotage, sabotage your efforts because they don't want to lose their eating buddy. <laughs> and uh, it's not that they don't want to see you succeed, but they don't want how it rather points out their... <laughs> dietary, let's say, failures or uh, bad ways. So in any case, I just think that being in a group is so helpful and I'm so fortunate that I have the platform and the ability to help organize these groups. I lead them, I host them, I try to take your hand and lead you as best I can into this amazing way of life and you'll be surrounded by a Zoom room full of people who are there to support you. Um, if you're rather new to this, I encourage you to stick with the regular carnivore groups as opposed to the high fat protocol groups. I do have two specifically labeled groups and in the regular carnivore groups, for sure, there is plenty of discussion about the higher fat and all questions will can be asked and answered over there too about that but i like to leave that general carnivore group for anything and everything a full discussion of you know the the noise that's in the carnivore community about electrolytes and salt and water and fruit and honey and liver and organs and all of that so i just want it to be a place where it is a group of people, and I always say, community is the opposite of addiction, and addictions love isolation. And get yourself in a group and be active and talk and be in this space where you know it's safe to just ask questions and be bold about this crazy thing you're taking on and say, wow, all these other people are kind of hanging and doing the same thing. How cool is that? And that's why I love the meetups too. Meet face to face with people. Be at a table full of people. They're all just eating meat with you. How awesome is that? And talking about how many amazing changes have occurred in their life because of it. So, um, all right, let me just go in here quick just to see. Uh, that's the one thing I so love about carnivores that the cravings seem to go away. Not that I can't be tempted, but I'm mentally better able. Yeah, you get to that point where you're choosing to not have it in a very calm, sane way. Worth every mile says, love the advice. Thanks. Hey, I'd love to hear how to cook a chuck roast and ensure it stays moist. I've seared it first, use instant pot, crock pot oven. It just always seems stringy and dry, ugh. All right, worth every mile. I'm gonna work on a uh, YouTube video of methods of chuck roast and uh, let's see, Keto Texas, enjoy the beach walks talks, feeling great at 59, doing keto carnivore, haven't felt this good since high school. Love that. This makes me want to live by a beach. Yeah, yeah, Roxanne, it's pretty amazing that this is uh, my front yard and I'm so fortunate and I love to be able to share it 
And that being said, I am back home. <laughs> so, and I've run out of light. <laughs> so between those two things, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you all for joining. I will get this posted on YouTube, so if you've missed the beginning and you want to catch it or you want to forward this to friends or family, please do. And we will catch you next time. Bye, guys.